The Timberline adds 33 inch all terrain tires, three skid plates. We have the new iconic silver metallic over Audix black interior. Furman Ford has given us the 2023 Ford Expedition Timberline. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. New this year is a trail one pedal driving, which is basically like EV. When you push the gas pedal or the throttle, obviously you'll go. When you start releasing it, it will apply the brake, and this is optimal for extreme off-road situations such as rock crawling. Increased ride height to 10.6 inches. The tow hooks will get the orange with that orange line that symbolizes the Timberline Edition. The front is going to be very traditional, except for the grill. It's more unique to the Timberline, which are C-structure LED headlamps, daytime runnings, and on the lower, you're gonna get a little bit of gloss black, but pretty much it's all matte black. Front and rear parking sensors with a 360 degree reverse camera. It will not be the best ground clearance. That will go to the Jeep Wagoneer, then the Chevy Tahoe. Black headlight accents and very similar to the Ford F-150, the way it projects itself. Expedition badging is going to be in the headlamp assembly. 18 inch magnetic painted alloy wheels, steel skid plates for the front, rear, and underbody. Fully box frame, double wishbone front suspension, a multi-link rear suspension. Both the front and the rear will get your coil springs and your stabilizer bar. Fully independent suspension, control track with limited slip differential black platform running boards with the Ford emblems. The only thing I will say I dislike right off the bat is when you're looking at the way the door hinges are. Going all the way to the top, it cuts off here, and then the line segment starts down here. It would have been nice if they would have kept a seamless line to go from the top instead of giving two different lines because that's what they did down the whole body from the front to the rear quarter panel. This will not be the shortest in length, 210 inches with the wheelbase at 122.5 inches that will go to the Nissan Armana which everyone was always saying well they don't really do a lot of changes to Nissan but I like the fact that we're still getting a naturally aspirated V8 because it's the only vehicle in its class amongst all the segments that's doing that besides GMC and Chevrolet. When you get into the Jeep Grand Wagoneer that will be the longest variant and then the Chevy Tahoe. Four zone lighting which is great for camping and doing that off-road terrain because you can see all around the vehicle. The only other thing that I wish that they did more is give the Timberline badge to the front bumper because they do an embroidery in which the Timberline badging really does set itself apart. It's a little bit more unique. Going into the back, you're going to get up to 9,300 pounds of towing. Front and rear parking sensors, which are 360 degree reverse camera, and just like old school SUVs, you can pop open the window to get access into your tailgate without opening the whole tailgate, in which if you're tall like me, it's not a problem. Otherwise, power lift gate going into 19.3 cubic feet with the back or third row up. 12 volt charger, it's gonna be right here. Storage underneath the floor. Spare tire, it's gonna be tucked underneath. Everything's electronic, so adjust those third row seats. The right and the left, it will take a couple of minutes or seconds, I should say. That will increase your cargo to 57.5 cubic feet at a 60-40 split. Do the same thing for the captain seats. A little bit quicker. Increasing cargo to 104.6 cubic feet, which is one of the best in class. This is the high output engine. Let's go start it up so you can hear that exhaust now. and they back the performance with a 3.5 liter EcoBoost high output V6 twin turbo, producing 440 horsepower and 510 pound feet of torque. That's paired to a 10 speed select shift automatic transmission, achieving 15 to 19 MPGs, reaching 60 around 5.1 seconds with a quarter mile around 13.8 seconds, stopping 70 to zero over 210 feet. Going inside the Timberline, 
expedition. Running boards help because the clearance is really good when you get this variant. Headroom at 42 inches, legroom at 43.9 inches. 10-way power seat adjustments, leather bucket front seats, heated, ventilated. We get the two-tone with the orange stitch work, perforated. The dash is going to be flat, the same setup as your F-150, except because this is the Timberline, you get that orange stitch work that's going to go through the middle. Two tiers of storage for the passenger side. 12 volt on the passenger side with storage on both of the center areas for both the driver and passenger with a 15.5 touchscreen LCD with navigation. We have the pinch. This has the swipe. Click here. It's going to make it where you have your wedges right here, which you can also add more wedges to it. Click here. This is to raise and lower the fan speed. You can just slide your finger or you can just simply click on it either way. Click the car icon. This will take you to all of the settings, which you start off with the cameras. It is a 360 degree reverse camera. When you put it into reverse, you have the trajectory for the reverse parking. Click here so you can line it up for the tow and then you'll see your front and rear parking sensors. Click onto this and you have different camera positions that you can see all around the vehicle. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, Wi-Fi hotspot. Click into the sketch and simply write Hawkeye Rides. Underneath you'll have a wireless charging pad, USB-A and C port in an area that you can put the big key fob, open up in here to your cup holders, rotary knob for the 10-speed automatic transmission and to change the gears manually with a driver mode select, which when you change that, it will change from normal, eco, sport, tow, haul, mud ruts, sand, slippery, with a fully digital reader that can go through an array of information for the driver. Three spoke leather wrap steering wheel. It is multi-function with the contrast stitching in orange. Soft for your elbows and it is large. Open up inside. It's a deep storage pocket with a tray. Just pop that out so you can see with a 12 volt charger. And this also moves around. The door panels and the dash configure into each other. Everyday material is gonna be on the top. This area here is gonna be soft to touch. One touch up and down for all the windows, memory for the driver. Bang in awesome sound system or B&O with a long storage pocket, it's just not so deep. And here's for your beverage holders in the front. For the second row, I'm at 40 inches of headroom, 41.5 inches of legroom, four-way seat adjustments. The door panel gets the same materials as the front, so everyday materials here, soft to touch right here only. Not here, but here. One touch up and down with a beverage holder, Another little storage pocket for maybe a smartphone and a long storage pocket. Third climate control setting, heated rear seats, two USB ports, an A and a C, a 12 volt and a home plug with storage underneath, storage beyond both of the front seats. For the third row, I'm at 37.3 inches of headroom, 36.1 inches of legroom. I have sufficient feet, butt and shoulder space. The only thing I really dislike is all the hard materials that come into the back. Power third row adjustment for the back, so it is reclinable. Beverage holders in the front, a large storage pocket with a USB and another storage pocket in the back. That's pretty much derived for the cargo. Air vents, they're gonna be in the ceiling, so you will feel air even in the third row. Nothing here to rest your elbows. Sitting into the center, headroom is still no issue, nor is the leg space because the center, if captain seats, you could just simply move your feet out and recline the seats back so you could really enjoy a long ride. I will be sharing butt and shoulder space because it's not as wide as the second row. The windows are large, you feel the air circulate. I just wish the Pano Vista moonroof came back a little bit more into the third row. 3.5 liter EcoBoost V6 twin turbo. This thing is insane. 440 horsepower, 510 pound feet of torque, nearly 11 inches of ground clearance. Obviously I set up and I can see everything. It's almost 
like driving a semi truck in the sense of how high you are. Hard to drive? No. The steering wheel is pretty light and artificial, so it definitely is an everyday drive. The seats, they're very big in the sense of comfort. They are good too. So if you are just driving it on a normal basis and not doing any off-road capabilities, it's definitely going to be comfortable in each row, which is a very important aspect to these type of vehicles because you more than likely will be using the third row, whereas you have the captain seats in the second row. I like the pass-through because it does make it very easy and accessible. It's almost like a minivan, but I dislike that exterior style element that I pointed out where the doors have that cut out and then it just kind of goes up into another line making like two different lines on the top which is not needed they could have just made it more seamless the dash very similar it's the same thing as the f-150 this was something that was changed last year this year getting the one pedal drive for your trail that is something that is good because if you're doing rock crawling you could do so without any issues giving her a little go I like the exhaust note you get. Otherwise, very quiet, acoustic front windscreen, dual pane side, side windows. And even with all-terrain tires, it doesn't necessarily feel all jumpy, so that is something good. Brakes, this is a long vehicle. And dynamics all together, you can still do that. With a turn radius, I'm imagining three lanes, and we're getting a little bit tighter, about two and a part. Let's go again. I would say this is more of your everyday drive hitting around three, three and a half RPMs. So you will hear the exhaust no filter in the driver mode select. You can just change on the fly. So if you want to get a little bit better MPGs, you can do so. It's not something that's going to be like a hybrid. So don't expect that. Now that's going to take me to some things I like and dislike and starting off with is what I like. The one pedal trail drive. When you let off the gas pedal, it will apply the brake for you just like an EV, which is such an easy way to do your all terrain or extreme off road driving. The second thing that I like is in the cargo, you can open the window. I know this might not sound like something you may use a lot, but for tall people, I personally used to use it quite a bit for my Jeep Grand Cherokee. The last thing that I like is how they add those Easter eggs on the interior on the dashboard, giving us that little city. I think that's just cool because Ford is one of those vehicles that love to give Easter eggs, whether it's on the headlamp assembly, the dash, the seats, they just do a great job in giving you something to look forward to whenever you're entering or leaving your vehicle. Three things that I dislike, you heard the first, that design element for the door cutout. The second thing that I dislike is this screen, 15.5 inches, even in the F-150 when I did this for the Lightning, it's just too big. If it was maybe cut down here, the vertical is okay. Just this extra maybe four inches is a little bit too much. So 11 inch, 12 max would be a sufficient fit. The last thing that I dislike is the badging. I feel they have kind of held off a little bit, not putting any badging in the interior, just giving us the contrast, which I get it, it's unique to this vehicle, but still badges don't necessarily cost too much and putting them in the headrest will really make this car set apart. As for the competition, the Jeep Wagoneer, that's going to be the longest variant. They now do a twin turbo six cylinder engine. So everyone again, like I was saying on the exterior, more or less are trying to go to the six cylinder twin turbos in which you get better gas consumption and it's still pretty decent performance numbers. The interior is going to be a little bit longer inside there. And obviously because it's around four or five inches longer of a vehicle, it's more tech driven. And I do like their dashboard layout. It looks a little bit more elegant and luxury. This one is going to look a little bit more performance oriented for off-road plus you have the technology so if you're tech savvy and you like this screen setup like Tesla you will love the screen but a thing that's a disadvantage to it is everything has to be configured through it so it is a little bit of a learning curve and when you're driving it can distract the driver going against the Nissan Armada that one's going to be a lot more simple the smallest screen of more or less most of the variants. The towing capability will be less, 8,500 pounds, but it's naturally aspirated V8, in which you have almost the same horsepower as this. 
going against the Chevy Tahoe. Interior space is great. I'm not a huge fan of the two-way movement for the second row seats, but it is optimal in the sense of getting inside and outside. And they've also increased the cargo by around 10 to 15% from the prior gen. The semi-autonomous driving is not going to be the best in class here. It really only goes for maybe a couple tenths of a mile in which it wants you to continuously put your hand on the steering wheel and stay focused. The GMC Yukon will be a little bit longer than this, also having a little bit more interior space, especially for the third row occupants. Here, I like how it's a little bit more open though. It's not necessarily as closed off and a lot of that's derived by this reworked dashboard that they implemented. For an everyday drive, it is something you can do if you're okay with the MPGs. You do sit up. It does feel a little bit wide, but it's not humongous in the lanes. Length, it's going to be huge, but you're expecting that when you get this size vehicle. And you have blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, you're taken care of with the safety and maneuverability. As you saw, you can get in and out of lanes if you need to. i like to thank Furman Ford for giving us this 2023 Ford Expedition Timberline for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, I don't know what you're waiting for. Click the next video and the subscribe button. Check out the merchandise website and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like. Thank you.